Section 10.1.1 Symmetric Encryption Part 1 We are going to circle back to the CIA triad with the focus on protecting confidentiality. We will be examining advanced encryption methods that are used in modern technologies to protect data confidentiality in this section. Encryption is the single best tool for providing confidentiality on data at rest or in transit. What is needed to encrypt and decrypt data? Encryption requires not only a method of encrypting using an algorithm, but also a secret key. Most people have at least a vague knowledge that these are the two components of encryption. But how does this work? First, we take the plain text data, put it into the encryption algorithm, apply a key, which can be a password, a number, or a long string of characters, and this produces encrypted data. To reverse this, we must know the correct algorithm and the correct key in order to get decrypted data. Let's take a deeper look at what makes encryption strong enough for cybersecurity. A lock on a door is a method to keep it closed. This is similar to an algorithm, which is a method to keep information closed to people who shouldn't be seeing it. Here are some different types of methods that can be used to keep a door closed, but still let authorized people in. We still need to get in, so there must be a key. With a regular lock, we have a regular key. When we have a keypad for a lock, we use a pin code for our key. There are many types of locks, but they all need to have a key for authorized users. How do you know if the algorithm is strong enough to provide assurance of confidentiality? We need to have assurance, which is something that can be proven to be true to some specific level of certainty. First, let's look at key space and work factor. Key space is the set of every possible key value for an encryption algorithm. The size of the key and its key space is important because bigger is better. Work factor is the measurement of the time, effort, and resources needed to break an algorithm. Once again, bigger is better. If an encryption algorithm is strong, then the only possible attack is a brute force attack, trying all possible versions of the key. For a brute force attack to not be feasible, the key space should be large large enough to make it impractical for someone to try all combinations. But what is impractical today may not be so tomorrow. Improvements in processing speed and the ability to use distributed computing are becoming more powerful every year. An example of this happened when scientists proved the DES encryption key could be brute forced by using a supercomputer and 100,000 PCs over the internet. Using all this processing power, they were able to try more than 240 billion keys per second. And this resulted in the key being guessed in about a day. Entropy is the level of randomness associated with generating numbers for keys. This means there is no way to piece out meaning from a cipher text. For instance, frequency analysis is defeated when a sufficient random substitution is performed. However, truly random is difficult to achieve. This last concept of mechanics of the algorithm are published publicly is not intuitive, but it is very important. The terms public and private and secret are used a lot with cryptography. In this case, public algorithm means that the workings have been openly published 
for anyone to see, as opposed to proprietary algorithms, which are kept secret by the creators and to some extent rely on that secrecy to provide security. Public algorithms are like doors. Everyone knows how to use a door to access a room. The trick to keeping people out of the room is the key. If you don't have the key, you aren't getting in the room without a battering ram. To keep the room contents secure, restrict giving copies of the key to just the people who need access and make the key as unique as possible. So that's one of the great things about publishing the algorithm. You have one less secret to keep. Common sense would say that you should keep how your encryption works a secret. That way, people won't have any information that would help them break your code. But it is accepted as fact that a publicly shared algorithm is more secure. Think of it this way. You have worked hard and used your brilliant brain to create a complex new algorithm. You don't let anyone know how it works so that it will be even more secure. The only person who has tested it is you. Now you sell it to lots of people and companies to secure their data. Of course, hackers, scientists, cryptographers, and mathematicians all attempt to crack this new encryption. They are very likely to succeed because the chances are that you are not quite that smart, that you miss something in the math and someone else will find it. They are peer reviewing your algorithm to make it safer because once that algorithm is published, the public testing is going to find additional flaws in how it works. By releasing the methodology of a new algorithm before it is in use, People who want to try cracking it will have a chance. If they fail after a period of time, then it is safe to assume that the algorithm will hold up in real life.